Today I got a new topic for us. It's PCP air guns, pumps, slugs, pellets, and accuracy. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Fab and Adventures, guys. Today is a completely new, different sort of content for you guys. And uh, I've been told that I have just too many hobbies. <laughs> and I've had to narrow some down and sell stuff off and whatnot. But you keep with the hobbies that anchor you or ground you or whatever you want to call it. And to me, it's always been hunting and outdoors type stuff. And I've always had a love for pellet guns, if you want to call it a pellet gun, right? These things nowadays are so crazy advanced, it's not your grandpa's little pellet gun anymore. This is an Air Force Condor made in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And I've had this gun here since they first came out, before they even had 25 caliber, I believe. And this here is a 22 caliber. It's claimed to be the highest powered air gun there is, basically and guys are modifying these and whatnot. And now you can get them up to a 50 caliber Texan and guys are shooting deer and buffalo and all kinds of stuff with this. And I know some of you guys know this already, but this here gun's been hiding for probably a couple of years. I really haven't shot it. And I just, you know, little pests around the yard and whatnot. And I started wanting to shoot again. So I dug out the old condor and started looking for pellets. Found out I was pretty well out of pellets. So then I started looking online to try and get pellets. And, and what I used to shoot are the H&N Barracuda and they were awesome. And trying to find those, everything's out of stock these days. So what I noticed was slugs are now available. And I just started experimenting with slugs a couple years back and I never had much success. And I think it was before the huge variety of slugs that come out now. And so basically to make a long story short, what we're gonna be doing is I ordered some slugs because I'm having a hard time finding the Barracudas. So I've got these FX hybrid slugs. They're supposed to be awesome. The JSB knockouts. I've got some H&N slugs coming and some other things. And uh, we're gonna go from there. We're gonna get this gun tuned with one of these slugs that shoots great and I'm gonna buy a whole whack of slugs then I have them and I'll have the gun tuned. Right now it's tuned for the H&N Barracuda match and it shoots spectacular. I mean, I've shot gophers at 125 yards with this gun <laughs> and uh, it is deadly accurate. I've dropped a beaver with one shot with it. I mean, there's a lot of power and a lot of accuracy in these guns. The problem, with testing is they use a fair bit of air and when you blow you know all your air out of this cylinder you need to recharge it and I used to use this hand pump here and it's you know it's a lot of pumps to pump this 500 cc bottle back up to 2800 psi and that's where I ran this gun was from 28 to 22 if I believe right if I remember right so that's what we're going to try and recreate I've heard slugs want higher speed so we'll be cranking the speed up it's an adjustable if you don't know the condor already it's got adjustment wheel on it on the side here you spin this wheel up it increases how hard your hammer hits the valve back there and pushes more air down and launches your pellet even harder so anyhow since i needed to do more testing new testing on slugs I didn't want to do a whole bunch of pumping because that gets old. So I did a bunch of research and I come up with this little uh, electric two or three stage, whatever it is, little air compressor to fill this tank back up. And that's pretty well what the review is going to be on today is we're going to talk about this compressor and how awesome it is <laughs> and how good it works. Mind you, I just got it just a few days ago on Amazon, paid for it myself. And uh, we're just gonna go through it and 
for some of you guys that are maybe just getting into PCP, which is pre-charged pneumatic, that's what these guns are called. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna go through some of the pros and cons of these things and show you it in use, a few of the maintenance items that maybe you gotta look at and uh, just some of that. So uh, let's get started. So both these pumps are capable of pumping 4,500 PSI, which is a lot. You can't do that with a regular bicycle pump. This thing looks like a regular bike pump, but it isn't. It's multi-staged in there and uh, it'll hit 3,000 PSI. I've, I, don't, I can't remember how many pumps it takes to take that 500 cc cylinder up to 3,000, but it's a lot and you're sweating and you're taking a break and whatnot. And I'm a bigger guy, you know, pushing this down is not that hard to me. But some of the smaller guys, 150 pounders or something like that, they do struggle getting that pump all the way down to get that, that high pressure air into that cylinder. So a few years back, these pumps here, I mean, you used to have to go get a scuba tank and go to your fire station or a scuba shop or wherever, get it filled up, and then you could fill your gun with that scuba tank. And these pumps here were just starting to come out like a portable personal little high pressure pump that you could buy but they were brutally expensive and to me it just wasn't worth it i had it i had my condor tuned it was shooting good i mean i shot 50 shots to a 500 cc from 2800 to 2200 uh, psi in there i would get 50 good shots so i you know when i got the new uh pellets coming. I'm like, man, I should get myself a compressor, start looking at it. And I went on Amazon. I just read some reviews, kind of took all the reviews that I watched as a grain of salt. And I just went and spent the money. And this guy showed up from Amazon a couple days ago. And I tried it one time. I pumped some air into the cylinder just to make sure my cylinder on the gun was still charged up. And it was. And I pumped her up 2800 and uh, shot a few rounds and that's it. So now we're going to do some testing. So pros and cons, I guess. These guys are lightweight, they're cheap, maybe 150 bucks or 200 bucks for one of these pumps. Uh, you can take them with you wherever, which now you can take these guys with you wherever. And uh, I guess the main thing is they're cheap, but they take a lot of effort. And uh, I mean, it, it got me shooting and got me into the realm of PCP. So let's uh, put this guy aside here. And we'll talk about this guy here. So, I mean, they're still expensive. It was about 600 bucks or something for this little pump, Canadian. And uh, it came in like two days. It was at my uh, door in like two days. And I mean, it looks good. It's super quiet. I thought it would be a lot louder and, and more of a, a hammering noise like your normal air compressor, but it's just a nice little thumpity thumpity thump and it works good. All right, so on a close look here, you can see it has alligator clamps, and that's for hooking up to a 12 volt battery. Get this out. You can hook it up to a 12 volt battery, or you can hook it up to this little inverter, if you want to call it an inverter. It takes 110 volt, and it switches it to 12 volt. And <clears throat> so basically, you can hook this up to your battery and run it, or you can hook it up to this little inverter, which is like there and there. It's got positive and negative marked on it. Easy to see, no problem. And uh, there you go. You plug this guy into your wall, this turns on, and then you, you know, basically hook it up to your gun and get pumping. So let's show you how to use this pump, how to fill this tank. So first you just gotta cock it, unscrew the bottle, Then you need this here adapter. It's got a foster fitting on the end of it, which is basically just like your regular industrial type plug. You pull it back, click it on there, make sure she's on good and solid, make sure this is open. We'll give the adapter some power. You can hear the fan running in here. And I've already got this set to about 2,800 PSI. So we're gonna turn this guy on. And then we're gonna hit the start. And then we're 
we're gonna just close that up. You don't need to torque it down real brutal or nothing like that. And the pressure is gonna come up until it sees enough pressure to start pushing it past the valve. So it's a nice cooled little unit. It's blowing air out here. And I believe it's sucking air in here and it keeps it cool. It's supposed to last quite a long time. The little bit of reviews I found, guys are getting a couple of two, three years out of them without no trouble. So we will see how long this one lasts. There we go. And then all you gotta do is degas it. That's just letting the pressure out of this hose and this little fitting. Now this bottle's sitting at 2800. Simple as that. Put her back in the gun. And we're ready to go shooting. Man, that was slick, wasn't it? So it comes with a bunch of, you know, it comes with a variety of a few tools. And it also has a little repair kit in here. It's got springs and washers uh, and uh, burst discs. And I believe it has a piston ring or two or something like that in there for the pistons. And then just your general maintenance toolkit to take it all apart. And there is a there is a YouTube channel that shows you basically how to repair these things, and I'll put a link down in the description for it. But anyhow, getting on to what we're gonna do here is we're gonna we're gonna set this target out at 50 yards. We're gonna do 10 shot groups with the hybrid slugs, the JSB knockouts, <clears throat> and some old Barracuda matches. We'll start with them. These are actually hunters. We'll get our baseline. These are the Barracuda hunters. They're an 18 grain pellet. These knockouts are a 25 grain pellet or slug, and these are a 22 grain slug. All right, so interesting. <clears throat> Here I shot 20 shots with the original setting for my Barracudas, and it was wild off the beginning, and then it settled in here, and I actually got 12 shots in this group here. So then I shot the JSB knockouts at the same setting, and then I shot the FX uh, hybrid slugs at the same setting, and it looks like it shoots them pretty darn consistently, and these here are a little bit wild, so now we're gonna turn the power wheel up and do it again. Okay, so you can see the power wheel is on about five, and I'm gonna call it 0.13, so we're gonna crank him up to 6.13, and try the groupings again. Okay, so we turned the power wheel from 5.13 up to 6.13. We're gonna fire the hybrid slugs here again, 10 shot group, and uh, try and get one more grouping out of the JSBs where we're losing light here. So you can see I went from here to here by turning the power wheel. I would say we're more consistent here. We're gonna go higher on the power wheel to see if we can tighten that group up. Now we're gonna try it over here with the JSB knockouts. Man, I am loving this compressor. It would be a lot of work to do this testing using the old hand pump. Let her rip. From what I've been seeing, the 10 shots is taking me from 27, 2800 uh, PSI down to about 25, 26. So we'll see how this looks here. 
with the power wheel turned up. It's only a minute or so and we'll be up to 2800 and we'll be able to go shoot the JSB uh, knockouts. This thing is awesome. I'm glad they finally come up with a reasonably priced compressor. And there's some other ones out there that are cheaper, that don't have the automatic shut off, and some of the reviews are, uh, I mean, they're okay on them, but they're saying these are lasting way longer, uh, way longer longevity in the life of the compressor itself. So I'm hoping I can get, you know, I don't shoot a lot, but I'm hoping I can get five years out of this compressor. Maybe I'll shoot more now that I got a compressor just about ready to cut out I would say right, another 50 psi or so there she is Ten JSB knockouts. Power wheel setting six point one three. Let's see how this goes. Wow, I'd say that tightened her up considerably from here at the power wheel of 5.13 to here at 6.13. I mean, it's 10 shots and we got two outside. We're probably less than an inch group of 50 yards. That's pretty good. Let's see if she'll do better. All right, we're back at her here this fine fall day. And after last night's shooting, here I stopped the power wheel at 6.13 and a fill pressure of 2800. So then I cranked her up to 7.13, another notch, and it looks like the JSB knockouts started going wild. And I, I'd say it looks like the hybrid slugs started going wild also a little bit. So we're going to tone her back about halfway, maybe a little closer to 7.13. We're going to shoot the groups again and see how they go. Somewhere in between there might be just the sweet spot. So pretty well just as wild as that. So I would say we need to go just a little bit, maybe lower or just over 6.13. It's pretty impressive how just changing the power wheel and sending them pellets a little bit faster, a little bit slower, changes your groupings. It's just like a firearm, center fire. You up your powder and up, you know, in incremental increases. However, I used to do uh, 0.2 or 0.3 grains at a time until my groups tightened right up and when they started getting a little bit bigger than I fine-tuned even more I would drop by 0.1 of a grain until I got that sweet spot <clears throat> So that's what I might do. I might change my power wheel just a, a few points on the power wheel up or down and see if this group tightens up even more, but uh, pretty awesome and I think we're gonna try these JSB knockouts at maybe Oh, I don't know maybe more than 7.13. Maybe we need to go six or 7.6 .6 on the knockout instead of going lower. We can give that a go and see if the knockouts come together or not. But uh, it's always fun testing. Let's shoot some more. Now I can't remember exactly why I only filled to 2800 back in the day. 
Like I said, it's been a while since I fooled with this gun and why I didn't fill to max pressure of 3000. And I suspect that would make a difference obviously in speed, but I would probably have to increase my hammer. That's another thing I'll have to do some experimenting when I can find my chronograph. <laughs> Can't find it after we moved a couple of years ago out here. It's in a box somewhere. No idea where it is. I spent an hour looking today and I can't find it. I have to buy a new one. But anyhow, we're gonna try these FX hybrids at uh, 6.3, which is only three notches on this dial under, and we're gonna try 6.9, which is three over, or somewhere in there. Maybe we'll do 6.10, no, 6.9, we'll do that. So we're gonna give that a go here. We'll spin the old dial here. I'll show you guys what's going on. So we'll spin the dial down to 6.3, which is six here and 0.3 on the power wheel. And then we're gonna go up and do 6.9. Let's see how 6.3 is. All right, here you can see neither of them are as good as my 6.6 .6 on the power wheel. This one's definitely more consistent than this one. I'm not sure what's going on here with like the almost two different shot groups. Five here, five there. Too bad it wasn't like that. I'm gonna say for now, my testing for today, that 6.6 .6 on the power wheel for the FX hybrid slug is probably where I'm gonna leave it until I get myself a better shooting setup where I'm way more steady. I'm noticing myself kind of wiggling around a little bit and that's not gonna do anything good for groups. So we're gonna call it 6.6 .6 for the FX hybrids right now. When I get a chronograph, we'll shoot some more and I'll get you guys a speed on it and whatnot. So let's go ahead and shoot some JSBs. Okay, so I timed it. It takes just under two minutes to go from about 2,500 up to about 2,800. That's not too bad. The first 30 seconds is just getting up to pressure or the first 45 seconds is just getting up to pressure. Pump her up. This thing is a lifesaver. I might've said that before. Well, just for the sake of having fun, I got some water bottles and a cup of potatoes here and I filled the tank to max pressure, 3000 PSI. And we're just gonna spin the dial on the power wheel. Take a lucky guess. Say, put the power wheel to about nine and see what happens. Which is not full power yet. Full power on the dial is about 12. But let's shoot a grouping like this. And see what happens. Whew, it'll, so you can see the JSB fairly wild at max power and nine on the power wheel. But look at, so basically shots one through five at max power or basically shots one through five at 3000 PSI fill and nine on the power wheel and then shots six to 10. Look at how tight that got. That is impressive, super impressive. Let's go blast some fun targets. <laughs> that was a direct hit. Couldn't ask for a more perfect a hit here. She went completely full through the water bottle. Came out almost right out the lid almost. <laughs> Obviously that gun likes that power setting in those FX hybrids. Let's blast this water bottle. Man, what a lifesaver this little pump is. If you guys are shooting, you know, something that sucks up a lot of air or has a big bottle like this, or you even wanna fill up your small little air bottle 
these things are the way to go. I mean, hand pumps, they're handy if you just don't got the money to buy one of these pumps or whatever. These things are so portable now, they run off 12 volt. You can charge them with your car or your truck, wherever you're at, shooting gophers or whatever. It's the way to go. And I plan on getting myself a 50 caliber Texan uh, in the next few months here. So this air pump is gonna come in handy. It's gonna be awesome. So today's testing basically just goes to show what you can do just by changing the power wheel on this Texan. Now, it doesn't have an adjustable regulator and that would make it even more tunable. So some of these guns that have regulators that you can adjust and power or hammers that you can adjust, that makes the ultimate adjustable gun and you should be able to dial your, your groups right in. But uh, these Texans are, are <coughs> these Condors are powerful. So if you guys are liking what you're seeing, go ahead, subscribe, share, like these videos, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. We'll catch you guys on the next video.